Good morning, channel friends. Second day at Michi's kindergarten, a kindergarten that has a beautiful history that has been there for many years and that has a lot of old furniture, but that is so solid. Furniture that has already had a few coats of paint like this one, which had a green glaze first, then a peeling white glaze, roughly applied because there are so many drips here. To speed things up, since we have just one day, I'll use a heat gun for stripping paint, but it's vital to get a good result, right? Perfect. So a second cheerful and nice piece of furniture to put in a kindergarten. Remember, we make these roaming videos to teach you skills and help you understand how vital it is, even in public institutions, to work on furniture and not throw away. Everything can be restored. Let's start. Outside in a designated structure where I can safely use the heat gun because I need to spend very little time on it. I also use it because I need to remove these two very thick coats of paint that have, in any case, deteriorated the structure, also because there are a lot of drips. My heat gun hits nearly 700 degrees, it takes 10 minutes. These handles over the years have received a few rough coats of paint, so we are stripping them today. I dip them in my paint stripper to speed things up because I want to strip them well on the front and back everywhere. And I put them here, that way it is nice and full. Always remember that paint stripper to be perfect and active must never dry out. So now I take a plastic film Roll the whole tray up well and leave it to act properly. Look, on one side, below and above, so that it strips everything well, and also on the other side. The important thing is not to be too cheap, let me say it, especially when we are using the paint stripper. Because it doesn't have time to act, it dries up and that's it. So this is our modus operandi today. Everything is completely stripped off from the front, the back, and everywhere else. There you go. Here too. These doors have already been washed, removed, and placed here to get a light sanding. Where? Where we remove the handle. Right here, there are drips, truly unsightly drips, touch-ups, borders, and if I may say so, very approximate painting applied many years ago with enamel. I must remove them because even if I apply the color with the roller, I can't remove the drip and it'll be visible, which I don't want. So this light sanding is just to take away the flaws. After this sanding, the door will probably be even uglier and we'll put it aside until we apply iris, right? By roller. Luckily today I have my beautiful wireless sander that runs on battery power. Work in progress. It is very easy and very manageable to sand where I want so I can start easily. I quickly run the sander over with 100 grit sandpaper to remove the step. I'm not interested, I repeat, in removing everything because magic paint would have adhered perfectly. 
We just did this step to remove everything that was peeling off and the drops. It's crucial to remove them. So a light sanding on the front around only removing drips. The top has been stripped and sanded properly, and I won't struggle or remove materials that aren't necessary. I decided to apply the Matarit cream and use the wood grain painting pad to create a wood-like finish. Because the wood underneath is not valuable, it's also very thin, and I don't want to do textured techniques today because I want to keep the smoothness and freshness of color application. I don't want to go and put textured bases that are too thick. So, I will use the Matarit cream only on the top surface. How do you do it? You spread it lengthwise, create large slices of evenly spread color, and then use the wood pad to create the wood grain. Watch how it should be spread. Be careful when it gets too hot, you risk it drying too quickly and then you can't work it. So remember, a place that is at least as cool as possible and sheltered from the sun. We need enough of it because we spread it on this very slice. I go all the way. Let's put some over here that there is less. And voila, let's smooth it out. And if there is too much of it, no problem. Actually better, you can remove it and avoid waste. Even when working with the wood pad, you can remove the excess, nothing should be wasted. There you go, let's remove a little more and voila, you should use the wood grain painting pad with the circle facing down, downwards. Start however you want, like this or like that, and rotate your wrist very gently. You see, the moment I bend my arm, I create different patterns, and as you see here, there is a leftover that we remove and store immediately. Now try to switch over slightly so that where there is the knot you go smooth and where there is the smoothest part without the knot from before you place the knot, see? Trying to make it much more natural and truthful. I don't touch this top now because it has to dry very well. In case you have created effects you do not like with the wood grain painting pad and want to touch it up, you still have an opportunity to do so in the short term. You can still take a sprayer, put some water in it and spray. This gently lengthens the drying time and you can go over the veneer again just to change the shape you have just created. So always remember, do not remove, scratch, or use, let's say, extreme steps.
A gentle spray of water, you leave it to act for a few seconds, then wipe again with the wood grain painting pad. You can easily fix the vein that did not come out perfect. While the materic cream laid on top dries, we start painting the cabinet structure. Emma goes ahead with an Elizabeth, ideal for these slightly glossy furniture pieces, since it leaves no marks. I follow her with my beautiful roller, which is spectacular. Actually, this light hair it has, made of viscose, so a special hair, can slide the roller perfectly over surfaces and does not leave marks. Fantastic, it has exceptional coverage. It's always important to remember that when working on corners on such smooth and shiny surfaces, both a roller and a brush are needed because if you try to get into the corners with the roller to fill them, you won't reach them. So instead of adding, you end up removing the paint. Here we go. Look how you can remove all the flaws with one sweep of the roller. Such lightness, look. With a roll of the paint roller, all the ugliness is gone. Children are leaving school and we apply the first coat on the top where we put the matteric cream. Always using the roller. I finish applying it all over the surface and the top. I think one coat is enough, the second one is not needed. It covers very well. The second coat applied on the inside with the roller is perfect. I was talking with Emma, it doesn't look like the cabinet it was. Now let's apply a nice, even second coat over the entire structure, mostly to also help reinforce it, which was quite compromised. We'll make cabinet doors dark sound. Firstly, because it will make the cabinet look much lighter, adding depth, since the light part is in front, the dark part is iris on the backdrop, and secondly, because they will be a perfect base for our decorations, which will be so many. So again, with my roller dark sand on all the doors, which were restored. As you can see, the glossy paint is still here, but we have removed all the scratches, chips, and drips. So many drips. And so it is. So, a nice, beautiful, first smooth and velvety coat all over, precise we absolutely do not want any drips on this piece of furniture and Emma helps to do the sides using the brush second coat of dark sand using the roller to cover everything well The six dark sand cabinet doors are here and we already applied a coat of protective paint because we wanted to have a base layer of protection before starting the decoration. 
So one, two, three, four, five, six. This one and that one are on the sides. We'll start to place the animals. What animals? We've opened two beautiful redesign transfers. One is called Sweet Dream. Yours? Hello, baby. To decide which to use, these are two transfers I've wanted to use for a long time. Very unique, with a baby theme. I have to be honest, this one has more clouds, but it also has very sweet and fluffy animals. Yours is more country and has more flowers, but they look great paired together. If you're undertaking a large project, like assembling several furniture pieces in a small room, possibly matched to the wall, you should buy both. I would start with yours, okay? And then we'll see if we will use both or just one. What do you say? Let's consider putting the panda right here. We carefully cut it out. To avoid ruining it as it is being used, be careful. There might be the little legs of the bird here. This is a panda with a sweater. You know that redesigned transfers are decals that can be applied to surfaces, almost like they are thin stickers. What do you think about this distance? Yes, very cute. It's just too sweet. You know they're made to be glued to the surface with a simple stick included in the tube. And actually, when there is already a protection underneath, like here today, since we put on the satin protective coat, they are really easy to attach. Do you see? It's done already. Emma, what would you place by the panda? Can we put a little flower or another animal? I'll add another small animal. Always let the air out well from under the transfer, remember, precisely to avoid damage in the future. If there are any bubbles, you can also put the plastic back on, as you can see, and press them down with a stick so that they come out and do not damage the transfer. It must always be nice and smooth. Et voila. What animal shall we place? Let's put this back in. Yes, very beautiful. But I don't like it here because it turns its back on him. All right. Here we will place the lion, which is divided into two. First, we attach the base with the little legs and the mane, then we attach the head. I think it's good, yes. It's very nice because it looks like it was made out of fabric. This one looks like it was made from the fabric of a blanket. The texture is beautiful. Beautiful. Let's now carefully attach the top part. This is a little fox alongside a rabbit. It's almost evening. We brought the furniture inside. I didn't want it to be damaged by night's humidity. And this is the classroom that hosts it, a classic classroom of an ancient school with walls that have witnessed a lot. But it looks good here. I must say that it is beautiful, nice, cheerful, but you can see that it is modern children's furniture. It's not just any piece. Iris looks great with dark sand and the designs narrate a story from start to finish. All the puppy animals playing together with balloons, in my opinion, it's beautiful. Now I'll show you how to fix the upper top, since we have created the wood grain using materi cream. So let me show you how to achieve a stunning result 
on a really deteriorated surface. First, you remember, I applied a single coat of iris with a roller. Now I am gently and carefully wiping with a damp microfiber cloth to assist in the process of removing the dust and paint. And now I sand lightly with a medium grit abrasive sponge. And I bring out the wood grain. Let's get the dust off right away so it doesn't fly around and risk it getting on the children's toys. This method is very convenient because by moistening the surface first, the dust doesn't fly. It doesn't get dirty anywhere. I also moisten here. Do you remember what this plan looked like a little while ago? Awful. A disaster. I had to work on it to peel off the old paint, but now I've covered it up with a really quick and easy step. I continue over the entire surface, and then together we attach the handles, finish the shelves, and protect everything. It's time to move on to the protection and look how beautiful iris becomes when it is protected. The tone becomes stronger, it becomes much deeper. And I really like it. I have to tell you, this roller made my work much easier, both for the application of the protective coat and for the application of the color. It was truly an exceptional discovery. I am happy that there is this exceptional bristle produced especially for us at Magic Paint. Because it is a very valuable ally indeed. It has a very short, very smooth, and exceptionally velvety bristle that helps you apply the paint, covering 100%, so you waste very little product. In fact, we used a very small amount of product, and it covers very well. It doesn't make you struggle or drip. Try this new version of the roll. This makeover is also finished. It's late, evening, it's 8 o'clock. But we were particularly keen on finishing this piece of furniture today to leave the classroom tidy for the teachers and the kids who have no idea what's here because they've seen more or less the color of the structure. They saw iris and everyone said that it has a hint of lilac, a hint of indigo, of blue, of light blue. No one could guess what the final color would be. They didn't see the doors, they didn't see anything. In my opinion, in the morning when they return to class and see this furniture, they'll laugh and smile because it's really cute. Now, it was easy even though we had a very compromised structure, not at the level of the wooden structure, but at the level of the finishing. It had over three to four coats of paint, including enamels and primers, and they were very resistant. We had to forcibly remove, using the heat gun, what simply wouldn't come off. And then, after lightly sanding and scraping off the last few things and smoothing, we colored. That's why we color, to save pieces like these, because otherwise they would look terrible and end up in landfill. They had already tried to get rid of it some time ago, but it was too expensive to throw it away, so I am happy to have given this cabinet a second life. So please subscribe to the channel for content like this. If you haven't, kindly subscribe to support us and to support the channel's growth. It's important. Secondly, in the comments, please let me know what you think, if you would like more content like this, or what specific things you'd like to learn. I can also do tutorials with tailor-made techniques. This one is finished. Shall we say goodbye? I'm going home to my children who are waiting for me, and who knows how tomorrow will go. I'll wait for a text from the teacher. Can we say goodbye? Goodbye!